So I'm drinking kale mixed with um, carrot. It doesn't look very good and it won't taste very good uh, even though the carrot part of it would taste good. But James is having kale juice separately from his carrot. He's having the turmeric and black pepper with the Sometimes. kale. And you gotta eat that pear because I accidentally smushed it. It's so beautiful. It's a, nice one. It'll it's be a lovely little pear with just a little bit of gets, blush on it. Yeah, it'll, but, it'll have a lot of smush on it. If it's not yeah, totally. Okay. Um, That's and we're having juice, this then? Kalamata olive bread, which is delicious. But, I mean, it's GMO free, but it's not um, could have not organic. It, right? So, yeah. The, I mean, the For grain the could have. Yep, and then, I mean, it's just ground up and it's in all your food, so whatever. Um, anyway, we're talking about Steve Hofstetter's Secret Optimist uh, and The Hot Zone, the complete first season. And unfortunately, my player did not want to play the hot zone. I don't know, my player, I guess it's old. Hot zone was too hot. Too hot for too it. Hot. So, I don't know, James, do you, what do you know about the, it's based on the true events from 1989 Ebola that turned up in a research, scientific research lab in the suburbs of Washington, D.C. Do you remember that, 1989 oh, yeah. Ebola? That's why I took SARS so seriously, right? Mm -hmm. It's because of stuff like that. And also because I know the way bureaucracy works. They've got everything under control. They've got all the answers. And the one thing they don't want is fear. Now, you heard me giving this talk to someone yeah. else. Fear is not a four-letter... Well, it is a four-letter word, uh, but it's not... You don't treat it like the F word, okay? It... Fear is good. Panic isn't yeah and so they're going around hey don't fe you know like the the big trouble is they're not fearing they're stupid 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 people mm -hmm. you're what there's something about when someone gets put behind a desk it just turns off their mind now understand i'm talking in general terms there are always exceptions so uh george bernard shaw wrote a play about one of those exceptions it wasn't the play wasn't called Too Good to Be True. It was called Too True to Be Good. And it was about a friend of Bernard Lawrence, or Bernard Shaw, whose name was T.E. Lawrence, otherwise known as Lawrence of Arabia. And oh. Shaw has him running around doing uh, behind his back, behind the backs of his superiors, has T.E. Lawrence, you know, uh, rubber stamping stuff and stuff like that. So maybe too true to be good, and maybe too good to be true as well. Because mm -hmm. T. Lawrence was the guy who was uh, saying to the Arabs, "We'll give you a country. England will give you a country of its own, and all this kind of stuff if you fight against the Turks in World War One." T. E. Lawrence was not entitled to say those kind of things if what George Bernard Shaw was writing about him was the case. In other words, he was doing stuff behind his senior's back. The way it's portrayed in George Bernard Shaw mm -hmm. is that it was he was more competent than his mm -hmm. overlings, and he probably was. But understand, he was overstepping his bounds, and that's, I suspect, what he did when he was uh, saying to the Arabs, you can, we're going to give you everything, you know, like, uh, no state for the Jews and all that sort of stuff. He didn't, he wouldn't have had the uh, right to say it. Anyway, bureaucrats. If there are other, some, there are some people about that, it? that are, that would be too good to be true, <laughs> or too true to be good. But uh, what do I know about, the, it, basically, it, it it's... You know, they didn't know how to handle it, and they weren't treating it with the due respect. Mm. That's the way it goes. So, yeah, it's uh, right. it's funny they made a season-long thing out of it. Whatever. Well, this looks like they're going to be making more. Cause oh, this is a recent one. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's a topic season. that's got to be covered. Yeah. I mean, that SARS thing was almost a disaster. I from actually, what I, I would have liked to watch this, and yeah. I feel bad that we couldn't. Because, honestly, I wonder what they're going to be doing for multiple seasons. Like, will this be... Um, 1989 Ebola featured this season and then another outbreak, do you see what I'm saying, featured or another whatever, next season, yeah, which maybe, maybe. I would be so interested to watch this. Well, it's it's but, the kind of stuff that's got to be dealt with. Yeah. Know? 
but you can see how uh, you know we'll talk about the shoot up gallery here in town here you know like uh, it's again bureaucrats saying hey we got everything under control no you don't it's way out of control it's like four times uh, the use that you were uh, saying and predicting and uh, James actually, talking about the injection center exactly right I'm not yep. going to use anyone's euphemism I'm uh, overstating the case but uh, they're acting as though I have to use their euphemism I don't use anyone's euphemism I'm a follower of George Orwell don't go around saying it's, it's not even you're not supposed to say safe consumption side it's mm -hmm supervised consumption so it you're bad which is you ridiculous because it doesn't even yeah like, tell what it's consumption of what yeah consumption yeah, of, course, of apples that's that's a whole idea yeah mm -hmm. right yeah consumption anyway. of comic books i mean it's uh it's uh, ridiculous yeah, it's typical uh bureaucraties so this secret optimist i was in bed and um I actually I was laughing in bed listening it to it. It was good, eh? I did <laughs> fall asleep. Yeah. But uh, it was my bed. I mean I don't yeah. I don't think Steve Hofstetter is a very nice person. Um, oh there's way worse. I mean he's sure, not like Dennis he, Leary or anything. I mean he obviously he owns a Chihuahua Cross and a pit bull, so he's a he mm -hmm. owns aggressive breeds. Yeah. And um, But he's not he really no he's passive about it. he's passive aggressive, right? That's his shtick. He's yeah. this big, ugly guy, you know, mm. and <laughs> Germanic looking and whatever, and Germanic name. And, you know, like what will happen is someone will say something dumb to him or whatever, and he, his answer is kind of like, oh, really? You know, like, <laughs> and eventually he does what, believe me, it's not like a John Belushi kind of mm. meltdown, but he kind of melts down every so occasionally. But because he takes it down so low, you know, like he's this passive aggressive, and his first response is passive, you know, mm. and <clears throat> so when he finally does melt down, he doesn't have to take it up that high, mm -hmm. and you're going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, I really enjoyed it a lot. He did a very good show. Yeah, yeah, it was very funny because I wasn't even watching it. I was just, I was trying to fall asleep. I yeah. was in bed, yeah. and I just, I, I listen to the whole thing because I'm just laughing and well, laughing. I, right? I stayed awake through almost of it. You know, mm -hmm. I fell asleep right during the middle, but uh, mm -hmm. I woke up and I, I was laughing. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Mm -hmm. And genuinely funny. I mean, you watch Dennis Leary and you're going, you're complaining about the rights of smokers getting trampled on. You know, like, mm -hmm. spare me. Uh, you know, I can, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah. Uh, much of Dennis Miller's stick is pretty, uh, uh, pretty dumb too. You know, like uh, now that he's swung to the hard right and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Some of it, I gotta admit, is funny. There's, uh, there's so many stupid, dumb, dumb people that associate mm -hmm. as left wingers. He's got so much grist for the mill. It's appalling. <coughs> <coughs> well, anyway, the golden berries are completely growing into us there's nowhere for us to move the chairs anymore to keep from breaking them or whatever yeah and so you're getting ready like tomorrow the next blog post there will this be no deck plants is going here to look bare, right? i know because i have to bring them all inside or they're going to die yeah they're so friendly we wouldn't mm -hmm. want to see them die mm -hmm. they had a little trouble there for a while and then they've uh, come back now you've been mm -hmm. taking off the yellow leaves but uh, they mm -hmm. keep growing you know mm -hmm. like uh like it's they're kind of crowding me here and they've really grown i up know here, so it's amazing it's almost october and they've just kept on going as though they live in uh tropics semi tropics i don't think we've ever checked up to see if there's only 10 or 8 or somewhere around there not for here they, they grew in uh, Africa and uh, just barely in the tropics. So mm -hmm. uh, that was in Zambia. So, mm -hmm. Southern part of Zambia. I'm not going to just say it was hugely tropical. But I barely. fully anticipate um, taking a lot of cuttings and trying to root them today also because well, I'm going to have some breakage they're, when I they're tried very, to uh, They're very, uh, they like volunteering themselves off of cuttings, mm -hmm. right? They're amazing. It's mm -hmm. just... Uh, I knew they grew in Africa, but I didn't realize that they grew like this. This is, of course, you're treating them uh, like you've got a couple of green thumbs, not just. No, green, they're so. easy. I think Anybody you, could grow you these got, suckers. Uh, green, they're so easy. You've got green big toes. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I do not. They are normal color. <laughs> I promise. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah, the apples are looking awesome this year. They're bigger than usual, aren't they? Well, we didn't Some... get any frost early on. Yeah, yeah, right. so they've had a yeah. long time to yeah. mature. I mean, they're looking almost like store-grade kind of stuff in terms of size. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. I don't, can't recall them being much better than this ever. She can eat this right off the tree. Mm -hmm. That's probably better to wash it because you don't use any sprays or anything like that. Yeah, when I mean when you get um, apples from the supermarket, they're all shiny because they didn't wash them, <laughs> but they wax them. They wax them. But and you, if they you waxed just all take, the gunk inside. you notice that was all. Um, that wasn't shiny on the outside, but I rub it on my shirt. Look at that. Check it oh, out. Need, shiny as can be. I need cataract surgery <laughs> again. Man, I'm blinded by the shininess. Wow. <laughs> no. And very sweet. Well, speaking of sweet, mm. oh, what if I just try the opposite here? Mm. Yeesh. This is carrot juice mainly? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but well you did I'm put some turmeric in it, right? Just this one. Okay. Yeah, I saw something different on top of there, so... Mm -hmm. um, trust me on this. That one, I had to... Like, I was running the machine through. I ran it, the carrots through here. Like, I mixed mine, kale, and carrot. But it wow. was still a little bit brown, oh, okay. green, yeah, whatever, from right. the kale. Oh, yeah. so that's right. mm -hmm. Anyway, I can't expect it to be sweet as regular. As sweet as regular. I think you can. Okay, we'll Chug see. back. Pretty close. Pretty close. Wow. That really makes you appreciate carrot juice when you're mm -hmm. drinking it after kale juice. Mm -hmm. Wow. Gotta get rid of my green mustache. We might not have green. I think that took me. Green, t big toes, but I got a green mustache. I think it took me two hours to make dinner today. It was a long time. Washing kale. Yeah, yeah. Takes a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you spent a long time. It was amazing. Yeah, well, I'm feeling carrots, but that doesn't take. Well, the dogs were getting impatient. They knew oh, what they was love coming it. up, eh? Yeah, they love cats. 